David Mascarenhas was my father. You won't find anything about him on the web. But those whose paths he crossed tell me he was a great man. They all remember him fondly as a soft-spoken family man who spent his life taking care of his family and friends. He firmly believed that helping those that were less fortunate was the path to happiness. Papa was born in Ponda, Goa on April 27, 1923 to proud parents Antonio Philip and Anastasia. Antonio Philip was an enterprising young man. He built his own house, brought a plantation in Kuti, and had big plans for, it for the future. But tragedy struck the family. Antonio Philip fell ill and died at a very young age of 46, leaving Anastasia with young mouths to feed and not many resources except the farm. Papa was only eight years old. The family was shattered. His oldest sibling, Rita, had married a well-to-do person in Mongol. Her husband worked in Persia. She took Papa under her wing and enrolled him in the prestigious Loyola High School in Margao. As most students did in those days, Papa left home to live as a boarder in Margao. It was his days as a boarder that modeled his character, his guardian at home, and the teachers at school instilled great values in him. Papa started attending daily mass, a habit that stayed with him until the very end. After he completed high school in his early 20s, he decided it was time to support his family. In those days, there were not many high-paying jobs in Goa. People would go abroad to seek better opportunities. Most became seamen or went to either Africa, the Middle East or Bombay. Papa left home and moved to Bombay in search of employment. Bombay was a city of dreams, but it was also expensive to live there. Accommodations were hard to come by. Most migrants from Goa that came to Bombay lived in goods, commonly known as clubs. Every Goan village had its club around Dobi Talao. The Ponda Club, also known as St. Anne's Club, was on the third floor of the iconic Jer Mahal. The club had a huge hall lined with big wooden trunks, probably brought by the seamen. One slept on the trunk or on the hall floor at night. During the day, they left for work or did chores around the club such as cooking and cleaning. Papa's search for employment led to two offers. A well-paying job with the private oil company, ESO, and a government job at the JJ Hospital. Leading towards the security of a government job, Papa made his decision. He was provided housing at the old establishment quarters on the JJ Hospital campus. Papa found his comfort in companionship in the church. He was attending daily mass at St. Joseph's Umarkadi. He joined the St. Vincent de Paul Society, an outreach ministry that comforts the poor and the downtrodden. He was also an active member of the Jens Solidarity Ministry. He joined the Konkani Choir at St. Joseph's. The Sunday Konkani Mass used to be at 6.30 a.m. Papa was well liked and respected by his seniors, colleagues, and subordinates. Soon he was promoted at work 
and moved into larger accommodation at the new establishment quarters. Wanting a better life for his sister, Josephine, and our cousins, he invited them to come and leave, live with him. He was a father figure to his nieces, strict yet loving. Papa also loved music. He played the violin, taught our cousins to sing and pray. There was no dinner until they had prayed the rosary. No short dresses and no gossiping as well. In 1961, his brother-in-law introduced him to Philomena da Silva, a homely girl from Borda, Margao. Papa and Mama saw each other, and it was a yes from both. The date was set, and they got married on February 24, 1962, soon after the liberation of Goa. The wedding was held at St. Anne's Church in Ponda, and as was the tradition then, the reception was held at Papa's house. Travelling from Margao to Ponda was a big pain, as the Borin Bridge had been destroyed by the Portuguese, and the people had to cross the Zuari River by ferry. Imagine the wedding troop crossing the river in a boat. The second day celebrations were held at Mama's house in Margao. Her parents, Cassiano and Clara da Silva, were gracious hosts and everyone had a great time. At the Apone, which is traditionally the second day reception at the bride's house. Soon it was time to head back to Bombay. Life was good. Mama had many relatives in Bombay and soon Auntie Livia came to live with us as well. Papa was blessed with four sons. I was born in September 1963. Victor in September 1964. Edgar in October 1965 and Nobby in November 1967. We were his pride and joy. There were good times and bad. The most disturbing one was when Edgar got lost when we went to see the trains at Sandestrode station and was finally found in children's home that night. It was the first time we had seen Papa cry. Soon we started school and life got hectic. Papa's typical day started at 5.30 a.m. He would water the garden, shower and head to church for the 6.30 a.m. mass. On his way back, he would stop by the bakery to buy bread and stuff them in his large pen pockets. After breakfast, he would drop us off at school on his old faithful rally bike. Work started at 9 a.m. There was always a relative or a friend or a friend of a friend that needed medical care. Papa knew the doctors and was influential in getting the patients the care they needed. People came from all over town and even from Goa asking for his help. They were always attended to. Some even stayed with us until they recovered. Sundays were spent at SVP meetings followed by home visits to those that were looking for help or we would visit relatives or just spend time at home. Papa was also managing the Ponda Club and he was responsible for the finances and upkeep of the club. Sometimes he would take me on his bicycle to attend the monthly meetings. 
Special occasions like birthdays were celebrated with hot jalebis and tasty meat curries prepared by Thea. Tragedy struck in May 1972. He received a telegram that his brother T. Zuzi had died in a motorcycle accident. He was devastated. He loved his brother very much. It was only the second time we had seen him cry. Nine months later, his mother passed away. The family was in debt and he did all he could to settle all the outstanding debts. These shocking events took a toll on his health. A few months later, he himself was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. Doctors said it was too late. He was hospitalized and never returned home. Papa suffered in silence for a month and a half and passed away on October 31st, 1973. Mama was left alone with no job, no income and four young children to raise. Man proposes, God disposes. Who would have thought life would take such a turn? How was the family going to survive? Sure, family helped. But Papa was our true guardian. He watched over us and interceded on our behalf. He kept us from harm's way and ensured our well-being. He took care of us from above. He's been doing that for the last 50 years. Mama got a job at the hospital. We went to Salesian boarding schools, the best colleges in Bombay, and had successful careers. Eventually, all of us migrated and settled in America. Papa's family tree has grown. He now has five grandsons and three great-grandchildren. Today, we celebrate his 100th birthday. He has been gone for almost 50 years. But those that knew him still remember him fondly. He was a great man who did his best with the talents God gave him. We remember him and admire him because lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints on the sand of time. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Papa. Cheers. Cheers.